Today's project is a UFO to go by Dion Stott. And if you're a quilter, you're going to want to make one of these. So welcome, Dion. Thanks so much. Now, this is a great idea. You always have great projects, and this is perfect for a quilter. Every quilter is going to want to make one of these. Right. It's, it's a portable design wall that you can take um, to class or to guild meetings or even just store your projects in. And it's made with Riley Blake laminates, so it doesn't stick to your fabrics. And so laminate is an essential part of right. this. And it's uh, on the inside is um, fusible is fleece. So smart because it holds it's your projects right. in place, and, and these aren't even pieced together in it. Right, and it, um, you know, it stays, stays in place, and you can roll it up and store it, or make one for every project you have. Pile up your your quilt blocks, and then because it's laminate, it doesn't stick, and then makes it very portable. And you just roll it up, and then the elastics you. Put elastics with the button so it keeps everything in nice and secure. Then just tie a bow a around ribbon. it, wrap it around. And so that's really all it takes is half a yard of laminate, half a yard of the fusible fleece mm -hmm. from Pellon, a couple of elastic bands, two cute buttons, and um, some binding for the outside edge. Oh, and did I say a yard of ribbon? A yard of ribbon. And a yard yeah. of, of some, isn't that cute? Cuteness ribbon. Any ribbon you want. We used right. our grow grain designer ribbon. So cute. Okay, so to get started, we'll cut the laminate and the fusible fleece 15 inches wide and 30 inches long. Okay. And then you just open this up. Right, and um, you know, it's, it's the width of fabric, so the leftovers we can use to make. Um, one of those laminate bags for our sewing kit. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So 30 inches. Scoot down there. Now, the selvage is on. Yeah, OK, so helps. we'll cut the selvages off. And this fabric is just so easy and to work with. And something to remember is the laminates don't go all the way to the edge. So you just want to make sure you cut where the laminate finishes. So there's about. Oh, there's a selvage there and another fourth inch, the laminate starts. So not much. Yeah. Okay, would you trim that? Just slide okay. that down here. Okay, and then we'll cut it um, 15 inches wide. And we'll do the same with the, with the pellon. So then we can um, place these with the fusible. And you can feel mm -hmm. that's got little bumps on it. It's a, a, a glue that's heat activated. And so what we'll do is press this. And this is a great pellon product. It is. Like this. And we'll press it to the back side of the laminate. And um, you can press on laminate. We're going to use steam. And as long as you press on the back side. Right, or you could even, um, from what I understand, if you use a press cloth and be really careful, then yes you, can you can press from the front. But we'll, we'll press from the back and use our steam iron. So that's our next, next task. You can hear it's all ready to go. So using fusible fleece, um, it's recommended that you just place your iron on for 10 seconds. Use steam, you can see the steam coming up. And then overlap your iron so that it activates that glue. And it just nicely and it will stick. adheres mm -hmm. to the back side of the laminates. Now if for some reason your fleece is a little larger than your laminate, um, you don't want to get that sticky glue onto your ironing pad. So and trim so before. you can trim before, or if you have a, a mylar pressing sheet, or even a, a parchment sheet that you use for cookies put in your baking underneath. sheet, put that underneath and it'll That's protect your idea. ironing board. Great idea. Okay. We'll continue that the entire and get that adhered. See that? Okay. That works great. So we just finished ironing. Right, and now and it just adheres so nicely to the back of this laminate. Isn't that great? It's so easy. 
Okay, so we can trim our edges and square them back up. Just it distorted just a little bit while we were pressing it. So we'll get that square and then we're ready to put our binding on. All right, so we're just going to trim a little bit off. Make sure that those edges are square. Mm -hmm. All even. You do all the sides. Yeah, we want those, sides. those even so we can add our binding on. Basically, we're going to treat this like a little quilt and add a binding to it. Just finish off the edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've trimmed all four sides just to get a nice edge so we can put this binding on. And um, we've done a tutorial about how to make binding, how to apply a machine binding, but we'll do the same. Should we and just I review for a minute? Yes, I love the way you do your bindings. They're okay. always perfect. So the raw edges of the binding are aligned right with the edge of your quilt, let's say. And or you this do a project. two inch because you're using a fourth inch foot. Right. Well, so I, I love my fourth inch foot with a guide on it. Okay, so we'll leave a little tail. We'll start sewing about here. There's really no need to okay. pin, but we pin a little. We stop do a fourth inch. Do you pin inch. where you stop, though? Yeah, you can do that. And then we'll put a pin in the in the corner, a fourth inch from the end, because oh, that you that'll remind point. us where to stop and make a mitered corner there. And then we'll continue so on you around pin and all four corners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Just where you stop. And then when we get back here, we'll make a that final joined seam so it's a continuous binding all the way around your project. Okay? Okay. Great. Great. Okay, so Dion's going to review how to finish your binding because it's okay. such a great quick method. Yeah, because we want to join this seam so it's continuous. Just flawless. Right. So here's our beginning tail. Need to trim that a little bit because we want to um, line this ending tail up and not pull too tight, but about two thirds of the way over in this opening here. Mm -hmm. We'll make a little tiny clip here, an eighth of an inch clip. Just so we know where um, our markings need to go. And on the upper one, we'll fold right at that clip and cut it off. Okay, almost done. We and then, see where that little clip is? This becomes our measuring tool. And so we'll measure exactly the width of the binding from that clip here, because this will provide our space for our diagonal seam. And then we'll cut that off right at that addition right there. Okay. And now this one gets folded right side out. Okay. And we'll make a little diagonal fold here, or you can draw a, a line. And that will Still become our stitching line. Mm -hmm. And then this one gets folded right side up. Did I say right side up on this one? <laughs> this is wrong side up. Wrong side up. OK. OK. And so let's fold this in half so we can get some space to manage it in. <coughs> and then we'll add this so that we can line up our, our square. square right there. and then. Stitch and along here. In. And then we're going to stitch along there, and it's going to finish off right. our and binding. Then we'll check that, make sure that our seam does, hasn't twisted, and then we'll finish it. Okay. So, so we'll go finish sewing our binding, and then we can then go we'll to the next step. All right. We'll be ready to add our elastics and our ribbon. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. So we finished our binding. Right. So now the next step is to add our elastics and our ribbon. And um, we'll flip this over. And then we need to just uh, work on one end where we'll put the ribbon. Fold that in half. Okay. And we'll fold it you in half. You don't cut it till you're done sewing. Well, we'll use almost the whole yard of ribbon. And we'll fold it so that one of them is about five or six inches longer than the other. 
and we'll fold it together, right sides together if it's a print. And we'll find the center. So 15 in inches would be seven and a half. Okay. And I was going to fold it in half. <laughs> that's how I find my oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's easy too. Make a little yeah. crease mark there. Sure. And then we'll place this ribbon, this folded ribbon, with the larger side up. Okay. So and that makes it. it so that when you go to tie your ribbon around it, then it'll be in the, the right spot. Side. Okay, so if you would pin that there for me. Grab a pin. Okay. And our elastics here, these are just covered hair bands. We'll need to measure... Just um, a smaller size. Right, so from the corner, we'll measure eight and a half inches. And we'll pinch these together and pin and baste those right along there. So when we... Eight and a half inches mm -hmm. in. Eight and a half. So let's okay. here's a tape measure. I've got two pins out. Okay. About right there. So we'll pinch that. And about an inch loop is what we'll leave okay. hanging over. And if we can pinch that together and then put a pin so it goes over and under <laughs> and traps that in. Then it'll be easy to baste on. Uh, if I there can we go. get that, there we go. Yeah, we'll do the same on both sides. Eight and a half. Let's see if we can. And to leave only about an inch of the elastic, so overlap a little about bit. That. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just take a stitch through it to secure it, and then we'll be ready to flip our binding fabric and it's back just over the top. In case, right? And that. just we'll um, we'll just use an edge foot on our sewing machine and stitch that, or you could use a fancy stitch if you wanted to. We'll miter the corners, and um, we'll just fold that over and make a, a miter to echo the miter that was on the front side, okay? And I like to pin my corners before I start machine stitching it. So we'll just fold that right to the back, just exactly, you got a pin? There you go. Just like it was, um, like we were going to finish it normally. Fold that back so that it makes a, a miter on the other side too. And then we'll pin this so that when we, when we stitch along, then it will make that nice miter and finish our project. Okay, well, we'll pin our corners. And we'll take them to the machine and sew. Okay. So we finished. Yay! Isn't this cute? Oh, it looks great. I love red and aqua together. I do too, and who would know? That's just really attractive. Um, so here's our elastics. Just sewn into the binding. Right, and kind of backstitched. We used, um, changed the thread color to match the binding color. And I'm not really worried about how that shows up on the inside. It's not, no. you know, it's not a show quilt. It's we just wanted to get it sewn. And it looks really great and finished. Um, now we add the buttons. So we'll measure two and a half inches from the corner and just stitch the buttons through the binding so it's secure. You're just gonna hand sew those. Well, we could sti stitch it on the machine. Okay. But we'll put a little pin there so we know where it belongs and do that on both sides. And, and to be honest, I've never stitched a button. On oh, a machine. on the sewing machine? I just usually sew them myself, but it's just I like as to do a lot of hand work. Yeah, you can do that too, but I think for security, because there's going to be some pressure on this from the elastics, that will, it's well. just a, a zigzag stitch set at zero so it doesn't travel anywhere. And then we'll finish those both finish and those. then it okay. the project's That's done. That's a great tip. Okay. Let's go sew those. Our buttons okay. are sewn on. Really? That's yeah. so easy. Wasn't I don't that know fast? why I don't do it that way all the time. Okay, so if your um, your buttons are on, your ribbon is done, we can trim these ribbon ends so they won't fray just at a 45 degree angle. And it's ready to roll up and wrap. 
Now we're going to show how to make a deluxe version, but you could finish right here. Right. And this makes And then it these elastics come around. And the ribbon oh just that. ties on it's the top. Just perfect. Isn't that cute? Gosh, that's cute. Perfect. I love it. Okay, so let's show me how to make a, a deluxe okay. version. One more thing before we move on. You can okay. make this even more compact if you fold it in half and then trade sides with the elastics. So it just one more fold. Just one more fold and then bring those elastics around. Oh, and uh, you're yeah. always full of great ideas. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> full of something. Okay. Okay. So the deluxe version. We'll use some another Pelon product. This is called Thermolam, and it's it's just a fleece without the fusible product on the side. But it it holds blocks just as well as uh, this fusible fleece. And so for the deluxe version, you'd measure the inside of your square of your um, fleece to the binding, and then cut the piece into a square that size. So this one ended up being 29 and a half inches. So we've cut a 29 and a half inch square. And then we'll place this inside of the, the um, UFO to go. And um, are you going to have the fold down here? Right. So when it's, when it's all folded up, then that folds inside and then it's still, you can hold so, so many more blocks side. in this. Okay. And we'll show that in just a minute. So what we'll do is um, mark where that fold line is. And then we'll mark um, a center line. Okay. And so you can just crease that again for us and then we can get a oh, that's not an easy way. Get a center. So right there. Okay. So center. Right. And we'll just draw a stitching line for ourselves. Take it to the sewing machine. And start here, and then stitch to there, and then our project's complete. Okay, great. Let's finish up. Okay, so we finished our deluxe. Here we version. are. Right, and it holds so many. Yes, it does. On the inside, outside, on these pages. Should we show yours so we can yeah. see how many blocks it actually holds? So we'll fold this one up. Isn't that cute? That's just yes. so cute. Looks perfect. Love it. So here's your deluxe version. Here's two on the outside. Then uh, let's see how many blocks it has on the inside of it. There we go. Four there, two there, and you spaces for more. two here. If you just did one block. You could have over 10, but if you doubled up, you could have as many as you want. Right, or all the supplies to make all of your blocks and roll them up. So there's the deluxe version. And that is just perfect for carrying all your quilt blocks around so they don't get wrinkled and they stay nice and clean right. when you're moving around or just storing. Okay, now if you don't want to make it quite that big, you Not could... Not the deluxe version. Right, you could do a semi-deluxe version. And that would be with just one extra width of, of the, the fleece. So not fold it over, just right. one-sided. But that would still give you four more um, spaces to collect your blocks in. Again. And just stitch right down the center of this. And just there's your semi-deluxe <laughs> version of this. Just another project. way to do it. And right. would you show us how you do the perfect bow? Oh, okay, the perfect end? bow. Um, it's basically you're tying a square knot, mm -hmm. in other words, just a, a square bow. So once you've made your loop, then whatever side you make your first loop, then check the other thread or, or mm -hmm. a string or ribbon doing or whatever. the opposite of you. Right. And then if it's above, then you bring your ribbon above to make your second loop on the bow. Every parent needs to know that so they can put bows in their daughter's hair, right? Mm hmm <laughs> So well, we're done. Right. So here we have the, the deluxe version. Holds 10 blocks.
This one holds six, semi-deluxe, and the simple one, uh, just for um, packing and carrying your and storing your quilt blocks. And one for every size. And again, right? a fantastic tutorial on UFOs, oh, your unfinished projects. You can carry them, right. keep them all nice and tidy, clean. And again, and you can thank find you. them in the sewing <laughs> and room. And you can find them. They're <laughs> there, easy access. So That's right. Thanks very much, Dion. Thank you.